survey says jobless claims rose 3,000 from 210,000 to 213,000. Continuing claims moved down a bit from 1.728 to 1.708 million. If we look at July personal income, we're expecting a number up three to four tenths. Three tenths is what we received. No revision in the rear view mirror. Sequentially, it follows up four tenths. Spending was up four tenths. If we look at real personal spending, it was up two tenths, as expected. Uh, one tenth cooler than our last look. Let's get into the important stuff to many. Uh, let's look at the personal consumption expenditure deflator month over month. That was up one tenth, as expected, year over year, 2.3. Now this one's interesting. It is as expected, but it is one tenth hotter than our last look. Now let's take core month over month. That's up two tenths year over year. It's up two percent. Also a tenth hotter than the rearview mirror at 1.9. Uh, as I look across the spectrum of markets, we're almost exactly unchanged. The, the long end 30 year bond's been getting a little bit more extra volatility, but the markets are getting a little bit thin, of course, in front of the upcoming three day weekend. Becky, back to you. Hey, almost the weekend. It's almost here. Thank you very much, That's Rick. Right. We'll talk to you soon. Steve Leisman is joining us right now, too. He's been going over the numbers. And of course, Steve, welcome back from Jackson Hole, where you spent so much time tirelessly working. With all those Fed guys. Yeah, we working were doing so uh, hard. working He's very exhausted. hard. Yes. Exhausted, very exhausted. very tired. All the winning. Yep. Look at all the work he was doing there. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a fish from an undisclosed location I can't tell you about, but uh, I need working. to thank my working. good friend Bill Camp who was nice. helping me out with that. That's a a large brown trout. Not not uh, you know, not too bad a fish. <laughs> Let's talk about the personal income and spending numbers, which are which are pretty good. Down a tick on the income number. Um, but in line with expectations, and, and these are good numbers, 0, 04, 0, 03. Wages and salaries, another strong month, uh, 0 0.4 in July, uh, 0 03 on disposable income. Uh, durable's down a tick that might reflect the uh, fall off in car sales. I don't know if you guys are registering that in market, in stock market prices for some of the autos, but you have had a bit of weakening there. Uh, but non durable's up 0 04. And there's that new adjusted savings rate, which they adjusted a lot at 6.7 percent. They, they did a, a revision of this. That's a big number. It, well, they're big. You kind of got to get used to the new level because they were down, I think, in the fours and fives. And then they went back and they looked at it again. So there's more savings out there. It's a healthier rate now. Well, it's we a thought. healthier rate. But I, I mean, there's that fine line between a point where it's a healthy rate and people are putting enough aside that they're supposed to be saving for a rainy day, saving for retirement, saving for all kinds of things. But then every time people save too much, we worry that they're not spending it. Is this a healthy number because they're spending at the same time they're also saving? I, I, I think so. I think people are putting and what the trouble with a number like that is it's an aggregate number and if it's all rich people putting money away it doesn't really matter. The, the, what you really want is you want it to be spread across the economy. We, we're unable to measure that in this number but you know you do have these numbers like uh, some large percentage of the people can't come up with $400 right. for an accident. The, the, it's the kind of savings that you that you worry about in well, a that, downturn. When, if the that income, was one of the numbers that the Republicans yeah. talked about so much in terms of the tax break. It, it was a small number, but if it could help people set right. aside a little bit right. more for an emergency. Now, I want to just show you guys real quickly after yesterday the uh, the rapid update. You had the 4-2 number on GDP. Uh -oh. And what we're doing is we're tracking 3-3. Three, three. And mm. what I like about this number, mm. now some some media peoples mm. will, will, oh, will register this as a as, as growth slowing. Mm. It's not slowing. I mean, it is lower. But remember, we're working with what we still believe to be a potential economy of 1.8. So you do a 4.2 like that. You follow that up with a 3.3. You're not giving back the overage there. Now, what just real quickly. Um, if you do that together, the 4-2 and the 3-3, it'll be one of the best quarters we've had since the uh, second quarter, sorry, third quarter one of 2014. Best best one of the best halves, yeah. two, two six-month periods. And it'll be one of the best four-quarter averages we've had since the second quarter of 2015. We will do a four-quarter average of 3% if all we do is 3-1 here. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line in all this, and, and this is not before this data came out, which is in line, so I don't think we're going to get a big change today in the GDP outlook. The idea is that July was still strong. All the, most of the data that's coming from July is supporting this idea of being over uh, the potential growth by, by quite a bit. You know, and we'll see how long that lasts.